this morning, we're joined by Camilla Constance, a UK-based intimacy coach, who says clients come from all walks of life seeking her hands-on approach. Now, we've been trailing you all morning and saying, this is the woman <laughs> that will come into your bedroom and tell you what you're doing wrong. Are you hands-on? I am prepared to be hands-on, yes. Right, well... But I never say what people do wrong. OK. People don't do anything wrong. There's nothing wrong in sex unless it's abusive. Uh, uh, right, so OK. everything's allowed. Well, we'll explain... We'll come to, come to what it is that you, uh, so to speak, in what, to what you do in just a moment. Um, but first of all, you, your life. How has... What has happened in your life and your relationships led to where you are now? Um, I think it was Maya Angelou that wrote What You Learn, Teach. And I think life is one of the bestest lessons you get in order to know what to teach. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had... I married a really wonderful man. We were really, really happy, really sexy. University really, sweetheart. Yeah, all of that. Um, beautiful wedding day, all the whole thing. Married, had three children, beautiful home. He did a good job. I gave up work, looked after the kids, and we just separated within our marriage. It just became separate zones. At the time, we didn't have the communication, we didn't have the support, we didn't have the information. And we just drifted apart until that point where... you. We were too far apart to pull back together yeah, again. Yeah. And you also said that you, um, all throughout your life, you knew you had a pretty high sex drive. Yeah. And when you were younger, you sort of saw, saw that as a, a neediness. And yes. now as you're older, you, you don't see it like that yeah. at all. No, I owned my, my sex drive. I, I, I grew comfortable with that. Mm. So how did you grow comfortable with that? So, so obviously the marriage was something that you both decided very honest, very open, two sides very happy mm. about this, understood the reasons why. And you went and did a, did a sort of tantric sex course? Yeah, I, I did a number of courses. So the first one was really my NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming and, and Hypnotherapy course. And that really taught me, you get to choose, like, with, with NLP, one of the principal, principal kind of ideas of NLP is that life is a choice. You, you, you create your model. Mm -hmm. So everything in life is just models and you choose which model you want. And the model I had subscribed to, which was monogamy, marriage, commitment, um, it was quite a kind of... It's like the standard patriarchal model. I'd signed up to that, I'd done it, and it hadn't worked it hadn't for me. Worked. I was really unhappy. So in what way did you change it? Which model did you sign up to? Because then Neil came along. Yes, well, I kind of... So that was still quite standard. You fall out of a marriage, you go into another relationship. Mm -hmm. But then... Simon came along. Simon came along. And, um, and I kind of... And, but I was still massively in love with Neil. And I was still attached to Jack and committed to the kids. So I was living with Jack, the husband, with, in a relationship with Neil, who was in Essex, and then enjoying Simon in between times. And not just Simon, because you no. explored all sorts of avenues yes. at that point. I mean, there were threesomes, you ex yeah. experimented with women also. So I think at that point, in order to create my own model, I needed to experiment. Try it all. And ex <laughs> yeah, I had to try this things out. This is like out. a shelf of ethics here. This, this is a lot of models you're going through. <laughs> yeah, but you have to work out what you want to what you want to stick with. And again, you've been very honest and open about this. I mean, yeah. you've told your mum, and your mum wasn't too sure about things. You've, no. you've let the children know as well. Yeah, the kids and have known. They all were the very way understanding about the they whole thing. They were awesome. When Simon came along, and and I thought I. I had really good advice from one of the head teachers early, early on when I, when the marriage started going apart. I went to see the head teacher because I was a teacher, and I know that the more, the better the relationship between school and home, the better you can support the kids. Yeah. So I went in and I spoke to the head teachers, and one of them said, "You need to tell the children what's actually going on because if you don't, they'll notice the differences in your behaviour, mm. and fear will set in. Mm. Where you've got truth, openness, and honesty, and everyone is understand what's going on, you're not going to have all of that. Well, there's no, there's no way anyone could accuse you of not being honest because you actually have told everyone at each yep. stage what's going yep. on. Your mum and, and now selfish. the whole of the nation. She, she <laughs> said, she said you, she, your mum said you were selfish because of uh, yep. the fact you were Which trying is another word for self-love. Right. Uh, right, so it depends how you want to look at it, really. What, what model do you want? <laughs> OK, so let's talk about what you do then because this has become a, a career. This, yep. this hobby, this love of sex has become your career now and you want to help others. So mm. what type of couples come to you? What are they looking for? I get two broad categories, I'd say. I'd get people who are young, quite... Um, outward looking, quite sort of proactive, and they want to keep... A spark I get of life. a bit like Gwyneth and her new husband, right? Yeah. That kind of couple. The, the couple who, like, we're in a new relationship, everything's fantastic, and we want to keep this. We, we treasure it, we want to maintain it, very often because they've had a relationship that hasn't worked. Right. Oh, OK. Yeah. So they don't want this... So you've, you've gone also. through the cycle. And what, what is... I mean, I know there's probably a billion reasons, but if you were to say the kind of main thing for them to focus on, what, what is that? How do you keep that alive? I think the main thing is not to expect it to stay the same. So I think when you have a new relationship, it's all really fizzy. You've got lots of that lovely new relationship energy. You've got dopamine charging through your body. It feels fizzy and amazing. And everyone wants to keep that. That doesn't stay with one person because it's dopamine, dopamine, rewards, novelty. Mm. You have to understand the brain chemistry of it. 
So you will never keep that spark. However, you will, it'll grow. If you have good communication, you spend time together, you allow it to grow and evolve together, you will go to another beautiful place. You'll get well, the oxytocin. You, um, we, we, we ask for sort of top tips to keeping intimacy alive. Uh, remain curious, be playful, always communicate with each other. After sex, ask what was your experience. Put a lock on the door to keep your children out. Five, find someone new. In the non-monogamous setup model, a polyamorous model, you can do that. And then you can bring that spark, which is what I played with. I don't now, but um, I think the relationship I'm in now with Simon is very much, it's very open. And if one of us wanted that, then we'd be open and we'd talk about it and mm. communicate and deal with everything that comes so up. So at what point is this, you, you said when you actually end up in the bedroom, because you Skype quite a bit, you do all of that yep. sort of stuff, but if, they, if the couple wants you to be in the bedroom with them when they're doing it, then you will be there and what do you do? Do you call out and say, well, I wouldn't be doing it like that? Well, the doing it is part of the thing. Where do you like, sit? <laughs> very often on the end of the bed. Do you? Yeah, I'll sit cross-legged. I'm quite kind of get, get, get quite hippie-ish and sit cross-legged and I'll hold the energy. I love holding the space for a couple. So th and that, a couple have an energy. Everyone has an energy. You just hold the space or do you hold anything else? I hold the space. <laughs> and, and sometimes I will, I, will, I will show people how to touch. So, for example, men have a tendency to touch with their fingers and stroke us with our fingers, I think partly because there's a heart point in your palm and that's very vulnerable to stroke with the palm because it opens the heart. So if you've got a closed heart, that's quite vulnerable to do. But women really love to be stroked with the palm of the hand. It's really different. It feels totally different, totally luscious. Yeah. So one of the things we work on maybe with Skype is how to do the touch. The touch is still not working. She's still saying the touch is not working for me. I will then show him how to touch. I find it strange because if somebody, if a couple are open enough to call you and have you sitting cross-legged on the end of the bed and feel OK with that, you'd think they would be comfortable enough to talk to each other about what they're not getting from one another. You would have thought, wouldn't you? But yeah. I think there's something... I think, I think sex is remarkably difficult to talk about and there's... In day-to-day -day lives, we're so busy and we always have a distraction, we always have an excuse not to. Mm. When you have booked a session with me, you can't run away from it. I think it's that. Do, it's, do, it's the do, not they, do you away. find that because you're sitting on the end of the bed, um, that uh, <laughs> that, that that they act in a different way? I mean, either it makes them shy, or they get off on the fact there's a third person in there. there that might possibly be anything. Obviously, I change the dynamic because I'm a different energy. Um, but I think what the, the main way it changes, just like any therapeutic modality when you're with somebody else who's holding the space and, and, and creating the context and keeping you both safe because mm. a lot of the problems with talk about sex between couples is that the fear they have that they won't be safe if they reveal something or right. they express something and you help maintain that just like you're helping me maintain this right you you hold the space for your guests mm. i do the same do you get off on it yourself no never you never sit there going oh that looks good no <laughs> i get utterly delighted and thrilled by people reconnecting. So when I help something, when I help a couple move to, from a difficult place, an unhappy place, to togetherness and intimacy and, and having that connection again, and I can see it and you can feel it in the mm. energy, that just makes me so and Do happy. people frustrate you? Has anyone ever really frustrated you? Yeah, you, yeah? of course. You've never, like, leant over and smacked his ass and gone, stop it! How do you know it's him? Not it like be... that. <laughs> or her. I was a year six teacher. And we don't use corporal punishment in schools. However, you can use your voice. Right. So I probably know, I wouldn't say stop that. I might just say, I might use a look. But there are, there are ways. Was he looking at you? No, but if, if people, well, yes, because, because sex is not just one position, it's not just one act, is it? It's the whole lead up. Looking for approval. Oh, my gosh. I've got so many questions. Yeah. We've got to stop. <laughs> we've got to stop. You need to come back because we've got more things to ask you. But for now, we're going to have to stop it. Don't there. stop it. <laughs> We were like Thank three you. minutes. Drop <laughs> everything else. <laughs> come back. Definitely come I'd love back. To come back. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank How you much does so it much. cost, by the way? No way. You won't book it. It's about two hundred quid a session. It's about two hundred a session. Yeah. Yeah, and a session is what an hour. Well, it depends how long it lasts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just, I just want to know how much you get for your money. You know. But up to ninety minutes. Up to ninety minutes. Up to ninety minutes. Okay. Wow. Good luck with that. Thank you.